Welcome everyone uh, to today's uh, conference call. I believe we have all the media who have uh, joined us. So we've got a couple questions already. We'll start with uh, Daniel Nugent Bowman. Daniel, go ahead. Hi, Emily. I hope you're well. It's really nice to, to see you, to talk to you again. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, it sounds like uh, Bob Nicholson spoke earlier and you, you plan to be at the game tomorrow. I just want you to see if, you're, if that's true. And also, um, if you plan on kind of addressing the players and, and uh, kind of giving some kind of message to them uh, beforehand or before the start of the playoffs. Uh, yeah, so we are really excited. Um, I'm pretty honored to be able to go in and watch the game tomorrow. I uh, was in tears the other night and I just, it kind of had a moment and it hit me that this is going to be the last time I'm going to see number 12 on the ice. Um, so it means a lot that we can uh, go in and watch it for sure. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to uh, go see the teammates just because they'll be going into the hub. Um, but there is like a surprise um, little gift that I'm going to do for them and write them a letter um, that they're going to have in their stall. So when they get to the rink um, before like playoff starts, so, like in the next week or so, there's going to be a letter from me um, and a gift as well. Um, that's my way of thanking them for all the support that they've given and wish them good luck and just say Kolb uh, is proud of all his uh, teammates and brothers and uh, that we uh, can't wait to cheer them on. Uh, next question, uh, Reed Wilkins. Reed, as soon as your microphone's active, you can go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, Emily. Thank you for doing this. And of course, uh, my condolences. Colby was always a pleasure to deal with. And thank you for joining us today. A couple of questions, if you don't mind. Yeah. What does it mean to you to hear, you know, Kyler Yamamoto, Caleb Jones, et cetera, all the guys who played with Colby in Bakersfield at times um, mention the impact that, that, he had on them and, and work ethic and just enjoying being a pro. That's, that's my first question. And the other one is uh, if you can take us back to November and, and what you thought when Colby scored that goal against the Penguins. Um, okay. So the first question, um, it's pretty remarkable. Uh, when Colby first got sick, uh, we started hearing stories and fans or teammates were reaching out, um, sharing, incredible heartfelt stories. And I mean, I married Kolb. I knew he was an incredible man. Um, I knew he was an incredible hockey player, but when you hear it from teammates or strangers um, and the impact that they made on his life, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty humbling and honoring. Um, I'll forever say I'm honored to be his wife um, and it will be my greatest honor and title. Um, so hearing those stories, and I mean, I was part of some of those stories too um, at team parties and got to see Cole with those boys, and he really considered them, um, like Ryan McLeod and Evan Bouchard too, as his little brothers, and he took them under their wing, and uh, he, he was incredible to them, and uh, I know that uh, he'll be watching over them and uh, cheering them on for sure, and for the next question, which I forget already, um, what was it? I'll unmute Daniel to ask again. Go ahead, Daniel. Oh, sorry, it was oh, uh, back in November. Yeah. November. Okay. okay, yeah, his goal. Um, the goal was so amazing. Um, I was actually just about to leave for the airport. We had got sent down to Bakersfield, and we had just spotted a puppy before. So the puppy was at my parents. So I phoned back to get the puppy and it was two minutes later, I was walking out of the door. Um, so I'm so glad I got to see it on TV and he was so excited. I remember him, I flew out like right after I saw it and I landed in Edmonton and he had the biggest smile on his face. And it definitely wasn't because he was picking me up from the airport or our dog. It was definitely because of that goal. Um, I was so proud of him and he, yeah, he, he was so happy and I'm so glad that, uh, yeah, that, that we, we all, we all got to witness that goal. I think it really showed, um, how much of an incredible player he was, um, and, uh, that he would have had a really, uh, amazing career in the NHL. Uh, next question, uh, Adam Cook. Adam, as soon as your microphone's active, you can go ahead. Hi, Emily. Thanks for doing this. Uh, nice to speak with you again. And uh, once again, my condolences. Uh, just wondering, uh, we spoke last time when, uh, when Cooper was releasing the song 
about um, about you as a couple. And I just wonder if you could, what do you think Colby would make of this this game? I mean, the, the Jumbotron, it has his image on it. All the players are going to be wearing number 12. What do you think he would make of this? And what do you want people to know that might want to get involved with the foundation? So Cole for sure is up in heaven right now being like, guys, 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 like too much. Um, I don't need all this. He was incredibly uh, selfless and humble and he would think um, he'd be incredibly honored, but he'd be like, guys, like not for me. Um, which is why so many people admired him um, for his character and those character traits. Uh, as a wife, it's incredibly, um, it's, it's gut-wrenching um, knowing he should be here, but it's so incredibly humbling and honoring um, seeing him all around the city, on the gates, on the Jumbotron, the game tomorrow. Um, he won't be wearing number 12, but his teammates will. And uh, that's something really special. Um, and I know Cole, as I've said multiple times, would be so humbled um, and honored by everything that the Oilers have done. And I know we'll continue to do with his legacy. And then I forgot the next question. About the foundation, sort of what you want people to know about the, the foundation. Sorry, guys, I'm bad at this. Um, the foundation. So I'm incredibly uh, excited for the foundation and what uh, we're going to do with Kolb's legacy. And um, obviously it uh, focuses on mental health initiatives and providing uh, sports to underprivileged children. Those are two big um things that were really important to Colby and me and uh one of the big things is uh I'm gonna miss seeing Colby as a dad because he would be an incredible dad but I know how many kids he's gonna help through this foundation and uh those are gonna be um those are gonna be his kids and it'll be really uh really remarkable to watch uh all what the foundation is gonna do and uh all the lives it will touch and Anyone that wants to get involved, uh, I'd be more than willing. And I know Natalie and the Oilers Community Foundation would be more than willing um, for ideas or how people want to be involved or donate or help in any way. Um, very uh, open arms kind of policy and whatever uh, different ideas, like I said, or anything, we'd love, we'd love the help and we'd love the, to have the community involved because they are going to be definitely big supporters of it. Uh, next question from uh, Derek Van Deest. Uh, Derek, uh, Derek, as soon as your microphone is active, you can go ahead. Go ahead, Derek. Derek. We're just seeing if his microphone is active. Derek, would you like to ask a question? If not, you can lower your hand. Okay, we'll uh, mute and we'll go to the next question. Uh, Daniel Nugent Bowman again, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I, mean, I just wanted to kind of circle back to your, to your first answer there because that uh, gift and letter sounds really like a neat gesture. Um, can, you, can you say what the, the gift uh, will be uh, for the specific players? Um, so the players don't know, actually only okay. Connor and Dave Tippett know um, what it's gonna be. It's nothing like, big or anything like that. I just think it's really something special that they can either keep in their stall or um, that they can wear every day or have Colby a part of them. Um, so yeah, I think, I think they'll enjoy it, but <laughs> hopefully maybe they'll post about it and then we can all know. <laughs> uh, next question, Mark Spector. Mark, as soon as your microphone's unmuted, you can go ahead, go ahead. Hey, Emily, if you, uh, you know what you're going through so difficult and and now this foundation sort of from where we sit looks like something that you're kind of grabbing onto and you're going with you know uh is it cathartic for you to take this foundation and and you know keep colby alive to an extent keep his name in it keep him in everyone's heart not just yours yeah i think it's really it's really important um when the oilers reached out to me regarding the foundation um obviously i was still in shock trying to process everything 
But I remember one of the first things I said is, this foundation is going to give me a purpose to get out of bed in the morning and it's going to keep Colby alive and it's going to keep his legacy alive. Um, and it's also going to be able to help me share my incredible husband um, to many people. Obviously, uh, I want to keep him alive in my heart, but I know his character and his legacy is going to help many other people too. So I'm really looking forward to, um, yeah, continuing his legacy and, I know he'd be super proud and I can't wait to see all the amazing things that, uh, that we're going to be able to do. Thanks very much uh, to Emily, to members of the media and a reminder, more information on the Colby cave Memorial fund at uh, edmontonoilers.com and uh, for people watching, etc., cetera, uh, opportunity there also to contribute and to donate. Thank you very much, Emily. Thank you guys so much for joining in.